Hi there, Mickey Mankus here, and welcome to Out the Back Door. Today, I want to show you how to make a very simple and basic bone broth that is so nutrient packed, you don't want to miss this. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a very basic and easy recipe. I'm not going to be adding onion or carrots, celery tops, anything like that, because a lot of times a person would add vegetable scraps to the broth that they're going to make, the bone broth. I'm starting with two bones that were in my hams. There is some meat left on here, and this is actually going to be a two-day process for me to cook down in order to make the bone broth. And the first step is I want to cook this meat off because I'm going to be using it in a bean and ham soup that I'm making later on. So I'm going to start with these two. I'm going to put them in a roaster pan and then I'm going to add water to it and I'm going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Now this isn't really going to affect the taste of the meat that's going to come off of here but the vinegar is going to start helping break down the bone and pulling out the marrow and that's the flavor that we want in this bone broth. So as I had mentioned, um, I have these in a roaster pan and I'm going to set it to about 185 degrees. Um, I'm just adding my tap water. I've got well water so I'm not going to be concerned about uh, fluoride, chlorine, anything like that in there. If you do live in the city and you've got city water and you're concerned about that, you're welcome to use bottled water. And I'm going to continue filling this up until everything is submerged underneath the water. All right, that's filled up enough. I'm going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Um, this is actually my own. It's got a mother in it and everything. I made this, uh, fermented it in fall of 2018. And the pH level is below four, so it's shelf stable. Um, and this is what I use instead of buying my own. I do make my own vinegars. So I'm going to pour in, oh, about a tablespoon right now. I'll add a little bit more later on. But what I'm going to do is cover it right now, and I'm going to let this cook down for approximately oh, 10 hours, and then I'm going to check on it to see how well the meat is pulling off of it. If it's pulling off really well, then I'm going to take the bones off, pull all the meat off, and I'm going to put the bones back in. If it still looks like it needs to be cooking longer, I'll let it go overnight. That's not a problem, and I'll do it in the morning then. So. I'll see you when that step comes up. All right, I actually let this cook for more than 24 hours and I did turn up the temp a little bit um, to about 200 degrees and let it run that way. The meat's pulling off the bone really easy and I'm just going to pull the bones out right now and set them on a tray and pull all the meat off of them. Um, if there's any fat or anything floating around in here, okay, now here's a chunk of bone. Um, actually, you can see that while it's been sitting in here, especially with apple cider vinegar in there, it's starting to break it down some. And in here where the bone marrow is, I'm going to leave that in there. If there's fat floating around in here or scraps that I wasn't able to get, um, See, it's really falling off nicely. Um, the fat, I'll just leave this in here for now um, to add a little more flavor. I'm going to try to get all, all the meat that I can because I'm going to use that in the ham and bean soup that I'm going to be making. So I'm just going to kind of clean up the bones, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them back into the bone broth here. And it smells really nice. I am going to add a little bit more apple cider vinegar so it'll continue breaking down because I do want all this bone marrow to come out of here. So I am going to let it probably um, sit in the roaster at 185 degrees again for approximately another 24 hours. I have let this go anywhere between two to three days 
in order to get every bit of flavor out as possible. And I will decide at the very end whether I want to add any additional salt to it before I strain it. And um, then I'm going to be canning it. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the apple cider vinegar to this, um, in addition to what I already added to begin with. And I'll probably put another tablespoon of salt in here um, to flavor it up a little bit. But like I said, I'm going to leave it in the roaster at about 185 degrees for at least another 24 hours in order to get all that bone marrow out that I was talking about earlier. And we will go from there. So the bones have been um, in the broth roasting for almost four days. I let this one go a lot longer and I did have to add a little bit extra water to it because it was cooking down, evaporating some. Um, I probably put mm, another two quarts of water in and it still has cooked down since then. But it's ready. Um, I'm going to start scooping out any big chunks of fat that are in there in the skin and the bones and everything. And I'm going to drain them through a strainer here. I'm going to strain all of the liquid and everything into a stock pot here. I'm going to use an old flour sack towel. I have several of these that are all discolored because I use them for jelly making and making Greek yogurt anything that I need to strain. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this wet. And the reasoning for that is because if I just put the dry cloth in my strainer and started pouring my liquid in here, it would wick up the dry part of the cloth and I want it to start dripping down through immediately. So I've gotten this wet, I'm gonna squeeze it out really well, just so it's damp. And then I'm going to line my colander with this. Actually, a single layer will be fine. I just want to catch all the small bits of everything. Once I do get this strained, I'm going to put this into the refrigerator to cool down so that the broth and the fat will separate. And I'm going to skim off the excess fat from the top because I don't really need to can all of that in there. Um, I do realize fat adds flavor but I don't need that excess amount in there. All right, I'm gonna pull out some of the bones here. And I don't, let's see if I can get a better view here. How um, it's been eating away and pulling the minerals and nutrients out of the bone into the broth. That's why so many people do um, make bone broth or buy bone broth um, to consume because it is so packed full of nutrients. So even if you're making like a roast of some type, whether it's pork, beef, um, you roast a chicken or a turkey, don't throw those bones away um, because you can still get a lot out of there. At this point, if you want, you don't have to can it. Um, if you want to make soup out of this right now, this would be the time to do it. If you want to leave the fat content in there, that's fine. Looking at it, um, doesn't look like I have a whole lot. I may not have to wait and refrigerate this. I may be able to can it soon. This is what it looks like right now. And there's just a thin layer of fat on the top. So I might go ahead as long as this is still hot right out of the roaster. I may get all my canning gear ready and can this up in pint jars. Um, I will use this later on when I purchase more hams during the holiday season and they're on sale. I like to can ham. Um, I just like them in big chunks. I put them in pint jars and can them up, but I also use the ham broth, the bone broth that I've made with ham. I put that in there as my liquid when I'm canning my ham. I use this in a lot of different soups. I'll use some of this stock also when I make my bean and ham soup soon. I am canning this up right now. Um, I'm only going to do 12 pints if I have that much broth. I believe I've got extra. So whatever extra broth that I do have over, I will be using into a soup. 
You can use the bone broth in soups and stews, gravies. Cook your rices in it. It gives it a wonderful flavor like that. Or some people just drink bone broth straight. They'll warm it up and they'll eat it as a broth because it is so nutrient dense. In this picture, you'll see how the bones have been pitted and everything. The apple cider vinegar was really working at that and breaking down the minerals of the bone. So this is what's in the bone broth, making it such a rich, dense food in order to eat. So we've got the bone broth um, on the burner right now, heating up to a boil so it's good and hot. My jars are in the oven right now at 225 warming up. My canner has the water in it and that's heating up. And I've got my Tatler lids in a little pot heating up so I can scald those also. If you've never used Tatler lids before and you're interested in doing that, I'll leave a link above to the video that I was showing people how to use Tatler lids I am pressure canning um, the bone broth being, um, it's a meat based product, but like most meats, um, pints you have to process for 75 minutes. And the nice thing about bone broth is you only have to process it for 20 minutes. I am leaving a one inch head space on these. I've shared with others uh, when using the Tatler lids, I generally leave approximately a quarter inch extra headspace of the recommended um, allowance for whatever you are canning, especially if it's a fatty product, um, because I have found I've had more failures if I just go by, if it says a half an inch or a one inch, generally meats are one inch. I'll continue filling these and we'll go on to the next step. Now remember, anytime um, you're ready to put your lids on that you need to clean the rims of your jars off first and being that this does have fat content in it, um, I always use white vinegar because it does cut the grease and I wanna make sure that I have an excellent seal for my lids. So I'm just wiping down the rims really quick to make sure that I'm getting any fat that may have dribbled onto the rim get that off isn't that a beautiful color it's so rich and this all came from bones and a little bit of fat and i did have extra broth um like i mentioned earlier i'm going to be using that in soup so i'm going to be using my tatler lids i'm going to be placing these on um, something different that i'm going to be doing are my bands instead of the regular standard bands that you get with your canning jars I ordered stainless steel um, bands, so they're stronger. I can push against them and they don't bend or give. A lot of people are switching over to um, Tatler reusable canning lids right now. And because I had placed another order for the regular mouth size, um, I didn't realize that I was running low. But when I was on a hunt for more canning jars for this fall, uh, regular mouth was about the only thing that I could find, so I bought up what I could, not realizing I didn't have quite enough lids. So I went to place an order with Tatler, and there was no problem, and pretty soon I have a notification saying they're going to be like two weeks out because... Um, good for them. The production line was really booming. They were behind schedule because so many people are switching over to the reusable lids. Well, I went to check and even though they said um, it should be two weeks, it's been a little more than a month. And I did receive another notice from them saying um, that they are expanding their production line because their um, business has exploded because so many people are calling on them and ordering um, the Tatler lids. I am going to, all right, this is a, I did a video um, earlier. I did them with the wide mouth stainless steel and I was kind of, I had mixed feelings about them. Now, as I always say, the purpose of the band is to hold your lid down while it's processing, but you don't want it so tight that the air doesn't escape from your jar. Um, I don't know 
you have to kind of really work with these bands. I had to put my glasses on to make sure that um, I could see that they were all going on evenly because in the last, um, the last time that I used the wide mouth, when I was actually putting one of the jars into the canner, I used the jar lifter and poof, the, the band, the lid and everything came off and my, my jar spilled inside of the canner. So I wasn't happy about that. I want to lift on these to make sure that they're just not going to pop off. Um, rating one through 10 so far on these bands, these stainless steel ones, um, I'm giving them maybe a three and a half out of 10. Um, I do like the fact that they are stainless steel. They're supposed to last longer. They've got a what, lifetime warranty on them. Uh, they're supposed to be rust proof and dishwasher safe, all that, but I don't put mine in the dishwasher anyway. But they're getting a low rating because it's taking me quite a while. I'm not just able to put the band on and hold this down and spin it. And they're, I have to monkey business with it, and I don't care for that. So um, my honest opinion on these, um, for the cost that I had to pay for them, um, they are spendy. And right now, I'm just not real thrilled with them. Maybe it's a learning curve, just like the Tatler lids have a learning curve because it took me a while using these also, and I had quite a few failures at the beginning. And I would say 99% of the time, um, or more, it was operator air. So, okay, I'm gonna get these into my canner, um, seal it all up and everything, let it bend for 10 minutes as I normally would when I'm using the pressure canner. And the pint jars only have to process for 20 minutes. Uh, our elevation is for 10 pounds. Uh, you double check your elevation and you go from there. But like I said, it only has to process for 20 minutes. So once I take them out, I'll show you how beautiful they look. All right, I'm removing the jars from the canner. And this is the part, um, now I'm impressed with the bands. I guess I had them on at the correct tightness, um, not overly tight. And I am able to tighten them down quite a bit on top of the Tatler lids. So I'm not quite sure if maybe there is a learning curve to using the stainless steel bands like learning how to use Tatler lids. All right, this is the last one. So this concludes how I make um, a very simple bone broth. There wasn't a lot to it. I didn't add a bunch of things um, where I have in other bone broths before, but this is just plain basic and anybody can do this. The recipe usually calls for um, letting it simmer for approximately 48 hours. I ended up doing mine for almost four days and I have a beautiful rich broth out of it that's gonna be packed full of flavor. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell and give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.